Hey everybody, Jim Setzer back at my studio, Images by Design, and today I have my good friend Serena Mann in the studio. How are you doing, Serena? I'm doing awesome, Jim. How are you? You know, I've been really enjoying these interviews with folks that I know that are sharing their success stories, sharing how they give back to their communities, and uh, no person I know speaks community like Serena. Uh, she embodies uh, community support. Not only does she have a childcare service that is inclusive to Spectrum Kids, she helps people improve their credit situation with another company she has. She creates these great social events that, that celebrate uh, leaders and givers in the community. Man, we could have an interview on any one of those topics. This is how, how much you're just moving around and, and making a difference. But I really wanna talk today about this kind of latest big venture that you've been putting together. Uh, the foundation is called IMPACT. I'm going to have you tell us what that stands for. Uh, and its drive is to create this innovation center, this learning center. So with that, I don't want to steal any of your thunder. Uh, tell us, one, how the foundation IMPACT, what that means, how it got started, and what is the concept behind this innovation center? Okay, well, IMPACT stands for Individuals Making Positive, Active Change Together. And that name came to me because there's a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to helping. You know, you have your schools, and then with schools you have public and private. Then you have your churches, the religious sector. You have, you know, nonprofits and for-profits. And some of these titles, I realize, sometimes create barriers from actually getting the work done. So inside of all of those different entities are individuals that have a desire to combine their efforts together for the greater good. And so that's what IMPACT is all about. It's about connecting with other organizations, for-profits, non-profits, schools, churches, and just seeing how we can combine our efforts and resources to make a greater impact in our area. Uh, and so the, the big project for the foundation is this innovation center that you've told me about. Tell the story of that and what, you know how, how that concept came to be your journey, where is it now, where is it going? Well, we started working on the Innovation Center about two years ago. At that time, you know, the goal was just to have a place that people could be met where they were. Not just the children, but their parents as well, because I know from being a child care provider, if you have children that come from a home of chaos, it's gonna show up in the child care center. And so how do you help the parents? How do you make sure that there's stability at home so that the children can have a better foundation? And so that was the vision. We wanted to number one, be able to have a safe place that children of all ability levels could come and get education. But then we could also provide wraparound services for their parents. And when we started, you know, planning everything out, we decided that it would also be good to have different outlets for positive self-expression. So we want to have the Innovation Center as a hub where people can come and get exposure to things that they probably would never even have the opportunity to. We believe that you can only draw from your experiences. So if you have a limited pool of experiences, it's gonna limit you in life. You're gonna be limited as to who you think you can be and what you think you can do. So in the Innovation Center, we want to provide rich opportunities for exposure to science, technology, engineering, art, and math. We want people to be able to use this as a way to not only develop interests, but also explore different career paths that a lot of them, especially in the more impoverished communities, probably never thought that they could even you know, do. But once they see, oh wow, you know, I can be a scientist or I can be a uh, engineer of music. I can be a structural bridge builder. I can do whatever I want. It's one thing to tell somebody that, but it's a whole nother thing to actually show them how. And so that's what the Innovation Center will do. I love that concept of it being inclusive, not only for uh, children of every ability level along the spectrum and that, but also again, go into the root of a lot of these core social problems, and that is the family unit is limited or broken or fractured or whatever, so. Well, a lot of times what we've realized is generational. You know, a lot of limitations that families have go way back to decades before. A lot of people don't understand that they have the permission to really be whatever they want and to do it. It's one thing to hear it, but you only know what you're exposed to. So. 
We want to be able to take people even from other areas and transport them to the Innovation Center so that they can see something outside of their normal day to day and really understand that the world is yours. Mm -hmm. I've been involved in STEM, STEAM for a long time and I see all these young kids that are just soaking up like sponges and it's the promise is fantastic but if they're going home and their parents are saying no you're going to go work in the shipyard because that's all we've ever done then you kind of kill that dream that has every possibility of coming true just by not having the support structure. It hasn't been an easy journey for you to, to, to uh, take the concept of this innovation center and get to at least where you are today. Uh, tell us a little bit about that journey. It has been a very insightful journey. I can say that for sure. Anything that you really, really want, I've learned you have to impose your will. You have to be relentless. You have to decide that you're not gonna take no for an answer. And you have to be realistic to know that there's gonna be obstacles. Anytime you're trying to do something that is of this magnitude, it's gonna be hurdles but you have to make that choice. Are you gonna jump the hurdles or are you just gonna go sit back down in the bleachers? And so for me, I'm a hurdle jumper, you know? Yeah. I've, I've ran into a lot of different oppositions. Um, we were starting off with a piece of land in Chesapeake where we were gonna be erecting a new building and things just didn't quite work out with the owner of the land. So then we found another building in Portsmouth and we had some back and forth with that. Um, the contractors were basically saying that we need to tear the building down. But then when we had our own subs come in, you know, just putting it out there and having different subs come in and give their estimates, the numbers all made sense. So it was one of those things. So are you gonna listen to what the class A contractor says? Or are you gonna look at what makes sense on paper? You have five or six different subs for each trade coming in and all the numbers are falling in alignment. So it was just jump. You know, don't let someone else tell you that it can't work. You just figure out how to make it work. You impose your will and you keep pushing and you keep going. And when you carry that energy, Jim, people always show up. People that you don't know will just come and just, hey, you know, I heard you were trying to do this. Here, here's some money for you. We just had someone make a donation today just this morning before we came you know so when you are really serious about it you breathe it you love it it will come together where, where do you go from here how how far along is the project and and uh, what's what's happening in the coming months years well we're excited uh, we're looking to close on the building next week yes yes and once we get the building closed, we're gonna be starting the demo. We're doing a full overhaul of the building. And hopefully if everything goes according to plan, we should be opening up the first of the year so that we can allow people to start coming in and just taking part in the different workshops. In the meantime though, we are doing online financial literacy workshops because that's one of the main things that we really want to impress upon the community, financial literacy, knowing how to budget, not just individually, but as a family. Parents sitting down with their children and being transparent to say, listen, this is what our family's household income looks like. Not hiding it. If you're hiding it, then you need to come to the center too because maybe we can help you develop new interests that can turn into a new career path for you that you can love and make more money, you know? But just having that savviness of knowing credit and how to manage your credit, if you made mistakes, how to repair it, and how to keep it good because if you have a poor credit score then that's going to take money from your family so we've been doing online financial literacy workshops and we're going to be starting a new program that we're looking to basically um, find children that need positive outlets of self-expression and we want to pair them with you know dance classes um, sports different avenues that can help the child have an outlet but the parent might not be able to pay for it so that's where we step in. We're gonna be paying the tuition for those children and we're gonna be doing that within the next month. So that way we can already start implementing some of these services before we even have the building open. Wow, what, what a great uh, concept. I'm, I'm so glad it's actually becoming real in real estate and all the other things that are moving forward. Um, uh, love to stay involved with it for as, as much as uh, as I can and you'll have me. How can they get involved? Whether they, uh, you need, probably need some volunteer help 
here and there, or they're interested in donating, or they're interested in, in coming along the journey to bring, you know, add their expertise in as a, you know instructors or, or whatever. Um, how's the best way for somebody to find out more and contact you to get involved in uh, in Impact? Okay, so you can go to our website, which is www.impactminds7.org. Or you can call me directly at 757-254-8156. And you can also email us at impactmind7 at gmail.com. All right. And if somebody's heard your story about your, your credit management and improvement uh, practice, how can they get a hold of the credit doctor? Oh, you can call the credit doctor at one 844 the number 2 up. FICO. That's 1-844-287-3426. And you can find us. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, The Credit Doctor of VA. Um, our website is www.thecreditdoctorofva.com. So please feel free to connect with us. We do do a free consultation for anyone that just may be interested in seeing where they are with their credit if they haven't checked it recently. Thank you, Serena. And thank you so much for taking a few moments out of your really busy schedule to come by the studio and talk to us about all these things you have going on. Uh, it's all good stuff. And, and, you know, I'm proud to call you my friend. Same thing right back to you, Jim. I appreciate you taking the opportunity to let me come to your beautiful studio and just get the word out about what's going on. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you.